Evolutionists claim that the solar system coalesced from a nebula 5 billion years ago. What they seem to overlook is the law of conservation of angular momentum. If an object spinning in a frictionless environment breaks apart, the pieces will retain the same spin as the original body. The easy way to look at it is to compare it to a merry-go-round in a park. As it spins faster, the rider hanging on feels greater and greater force pulling them off. When the rider finally loses their grip, centrifugal force sends them careening away. What you'll also note is that as they fly away, they still rotate in the same direction as the merry-go-round. If all the stars and planets in the universe came from the same singularity in the Big Bang, they should all be rotating in the same direction. And yet two planets, and at least nine of the 81 known moons, are rotating the wrong direction. This is absolute proof that the solar system could not have accreted from a nebula. The law of conservation of angular momentum prevents it. Unless the laws of physics have been completely changed, it looks like evolutionism is dead before it can even get started. I had to investigate. Isaac Newton's first law of motion is stated as, a body continues in a state of rest or of uniform motion unless acted by an external force. This is easy to understand in terms of linear motion, but this can also be applied to rotation and is stated as, a body continues in a state of rest or uniform rotation unless acted upon by an external torque. Thus, with no external influence to act upon it, the original angular momentum of the system is conserved. Analogous to force, torque is the cross product of a force along the application point relative to the center of mass, which tends to produce rotational motion. If the rate of change is zero, the torque is thereby zero, rendering the angular momentum constant. As long as the angular momentum is constant, the body is defined as a closed system until acted upon by an outside force. If you've ever turned a wrench, you have used the principle of torque. You may have also noticed that the longer the wrench, the easier it is to turn the bolt. This is because as force is applied to the wrench from further away, you are actually concentrating the force used to move the wrench a longer distance into a smaller and smaller degree of rotation for the bolt. This is known as leverage, but as stated, these laws apply more directly to a frictionless environment. So with these definitions, Newton's second law of motion is applied as a change in angular momentum is proportional to the applied torque and occurs about the same access as that torque. A very common image for how this torque is applied is a figure skater performing a spin. You've no doubt noticed that as a figure skater's arms are out, they rotate at one speed. But when they bring their arms in, the speed of the turn increases. This is because the momentum of their arms stays the same, but traveling in a smaller orbit. These principles apply to our solar system as well. Although there is a gravitational exchange between planets, comets, asteroids, and moons amongst each other, and especially the sun, if we consider all of these bodies to be part of one system, we also invoke another law. Newton's third law may also be applied as, in a closed system, no torque can be exerted on any matter without the exertion on some other matter of an equal and opposite torque. Hence, angular momentum can be exchanged between objects in a closed system, but total angular momentum before and after an exchange is conserved. This is the law of conservation of angular momentum. This is more severely represented by a neutron star. When a red giant star collapses, it shrinks to about 12 and a half miles or 20 kilometers across, yet it retains the same outer momentum. After the collapse, the remaining neutron star is left spinning several orders of magnitude faster than before because its exterior is still traveling at the same speed around the center of mass, yet over a much shorter distance. From Earth, we can measure the spin when at least one of its magnetic poles also happens across Earth, creating a regular pulse. This is known as a pulsar. The law of conservation of angular momentum applies to the orbits of planets and satellites in that orbiting bodies conserve angular momentum by exchanging distance and velocity as they move about the center of mass. Regardless of the angular momentum of the system as a whole, planets within the solar system are affected by the sun's gravity as well as each other. An early solar system of coalescing planets would have been punctuated by random collisions which affect the rotations of the protoplanets and leaves them free to rotate however they accrete. Their orbits are defined by the laws of angular momentum far more than their rotation. If all planets happened to be rotating the opposite direction, the angular momentum of the system would be no more or less conserved. The planets themselves are their own systems, albeit not closed. Our own Earth and Moon exemplify this. As the Moon slowly recedes every year, its own tidal forces cause the rotation of the planet to slow down. With the notable exception of other gravitational forces affecting these interactions, the angular momentum of the Earth-Moon system is conserved. It is, however, true that when a spinning object breaks apart, 
its pieces indeed will eject with the same rotation as the original mass. The planets, however, were not ejected from the Sun, nor were they ejected from the Big Bang. The Nebula Hypothesis describes the coalescing of planets from clouds of dust. In Episode 71, Boyle's Law, we examine experimentally how dust and gas behave in space. As these particles coalesce, their collisions and gravitation cause them to start spinning, eventually creating into a disk. It is at this point when the Law of Conservation of Angular Momentum applies. A basic tenet of physics, and another example of how creationism taught me real science. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may become the basis for a future episode. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.